Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's I, O Grandpa Coyote, coming to you once again from Crestone, Colorado, here in the United States of America. <laughs> a strange place of being, if I ever seen one, man, but a beautiful place of being, too. Just like everywhere else on Earth, all of it has its beauty and its wonder. I wonder what the heck I'm doing here at 4.20 in the morning, but here I am, and there you are, and so let's just get it on and have a good time doing it. It's like chapter 6 of Trucking with Grandpa. Yeah, wow. We're all the way up to the 6th chapter and haven't hardly got anywhere yet, man. If we were trucking for real, oh, we'd be out of business already. <laughs> we're three days late, man. Not three hours, three days, you know. Oh, man. They got the FBI out looking for you, baby. Where is that freight? <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, we're talking about learning to drive. Oh, yeah, settle back and get ready for this one, babies, because here it comes. <laughs> Let me adjust that thing up just a wee bit here. Yeah, that do any better? There we go. Ah. It's hard to get a picture just right when you're a craggy old man, I'll tell you. <laughs> See what I mean? But that's just, you want me to put the hat down over my eyes like that? Make it a little more styling? You know, I mean, that's supposed to be the studly cowboy way of doing things but <laughs> somehow don't quite seem to fit me does it so we'll leave it laid back there i mean you don't want to see my old bald head today do you i mean i get to wear my hat right that's okay thanks i appreciate it man <laughs> well life's just a rocking and a rolling and here we are learning to drive you know by the time I got into my teenagerhood, you know, talking about my own little life for a moment here, set some context for you, baby. I mean, you know, it's a story we're telling, you know. So by the time I got into my teenage years, you know, I thought I pretty much knew everything there was to know about driving already. Because I'd been driving so much, you know. By the time I got my license, I felt like I was a very experienced driver. But a flunk my driving less test twice before I got my license the third time I passed it but man it was like you know and then yeah what do you do oh geez okay three months later you know I'm driving my dad's old 4x4 the same one I later rolled down a mountain and totally destroyed and lucky to live to tell about it, because I bailed before the son of a bitch could kill me, you know. <laughs> that was quite a ride. I'll tell you about that one here in a minute. But Oh, man. So anyway, I'm like, you know, here I am. Got my license for three months. Fifteen years old. I'm a stud. I'm driving trucks over the mountains now, man. You know, hauling coal. I'm just a big boy, you know. I'm living high. And any so I'm turning this corner in town there in this little town that I lived by and there's a car coming from that direction it just turns out to be a buddy of mine and I didn't see the car coming from the other direction because my buddy was over on this side so I didn't look that way but anyway my buddy and I were sitting there flipping each other off or saying something or doing something and I wasn't paying no attention just turning my turn and I drove right up on the hood of another friend's car. <laughs> Thank God it didn't hurt nothing. It didn't hurt nobody. I sure hurt that car. They had to take that. That wasn't totaled, but they had to take it in and get it fixed, poor thing. Oh, beautiful little 57 Chevy. I felt so awful. That was humbling. You know, that, that kind of took my breath away, you know. And... <clears throat> I had a couple of other accidents that weren't quite so stupid, but still were like errors on my part, you know. And wow, uh, got some tickets because of them, and had to go take a driving course. And you know, normally I consider such shit lame, but by that time I was wondering, you know. So besides that, there were some cute girls in this class, too, that had done some no-nos driving, and, 
and uh, hell, we were having fun, you know. <laughs> so, shoot, it's kind of hard to pay attention, but I did a little bit here and there, and I picked up a few little tricks, you know, about defensive driving and things like that, and kind of added that to my repertoire of what I'd already taught myself as far as driving skills go. And uh, it made uh, a lifetime of difference. So sometimes out of the worst mistakes can come the greatest accomplishments. I wouldn't call that great, but you know, I think I survived a life of driving three million miles or so in trucks, cross country. Now, cars added a whole, no, probably another million miles. Who knows? I, I, you, who can keep track of that? You know, <laughs> I, I only have a rough idea about the three million. But anyway, I think I survived that and stepped out just at the right time because of some of that training I got there and that silly little class that the court compelled me to go to because I got some tickets and had a couple of accidents, you know. Thank God never hurt anybody. Whew. That would have been the worst, man, you know. I know guys that have been in fatal accidents and I don't know how they keep driving. It would be tough for me to do, I'll tell you. <sighs> Even if you totally were not at fault and there was nothing you could be blamed for, you were faultless. It's still a difficult thing to know you're involved in the taking of another human life. That's not pretty. That's the downside of driving. It's the thing you try to be good enough to avoid. Especially killing yourself, but you know, others too. You don't want to hurt nobody. In fact, a lot of drivers will go off the road before they'll hit somebody and endanger themselves sacrifice their own life in many cases just to avoid hurting somebody else that's pretty typical out there on the highways there's a lot of noble people behind the wheel and hopefully there's still a lot of that kind left in this new generation I know they come from different sources so who knows but hopefully there's a lot of that there too but we do learn and grow because of our mistakes and sometimes it makes a lifetime's worth of difference just like that. And you know people, when you can start to look at the avenues of your life in this way and see how poetic it all is, how synchronistic, how it's all kind of worked together to bring you to a certain place at a certain time where you can basically take all of these so-called negative energies that you've brought with you, that you've accumulated through your lifetime and still do right and left it seems like because you're the healer type man you know, <laughs> you take on other people's goodies when they can't handle them, you know what I mean and you process them, you know it doesn't mean you have to go live their life but you process them, you know it's a part of your gig because whatever you're taking from them is a part of what's going on in you and so that's why that and they kind of come in and work together and you go process that stuff in deep meditation of course and you come to see <clears throat> the more sensible sides of things you can release and let go of old pains and traumas but where do these traumas come from for Christ's sakes back there in your childhood when you're just learning to drive you know Back then when you learned to drive a tricycle, man, things happen in this life, you know. And sometimes we're imprinted by just the most thoughtless of things. Somebody says something, some rude, snide comment, and don't even think twice about it. And a little child receives the blunt of it, and it just goes in and makes an imprint, and that person can't love me, or something like that, and it starts you on a whole path of being too thirsty for love because you always feel there's not enough in this world. Things like this happen to us all the time as children, babies. And then we wear this shit clear into our grit to the grave because we don't really know it or understand it. We're operated through by that energy, that imprint that we got there. You know... So we as human beings on a much larger scale, but inside of each one of us personally, are dealing with a basic trauma like that that happened in the beginnings of time. 
when we first decided we'd become male and female kind of you know the Adam and Eve thing you know the the beginning you know some people think you know and our historians tell us we came from caveman days we used to live in caves and there's lots of evidence for that you know but I'm sitting here telling you we're made of earth ocean sky life energy comes from the sky and the earth and the oceans bring it forward in an earthly form and we walked out of that water feeling amazingly gorgeous beautiful alive and got a brand new playpen to play in you know some folks call that the Garden of Eden well hell that's a legendary story with so much mold on it you can hardly see the original you know the mold's grown around it I mean you know it's got to remember that story's been around for thousands of years then it might have been lies and bullshit to start with but there's a substance to it there's a place we began as far as time goes and we did walk forward from the mother ocean alongside another life form reptilian looking into one another's eyes couldn't see ourselves there's a different form of perspective see before this you see all around and inside at the same time after this when we came forward from the ocean as this new life form we didn't feel or think the same any longer as we did previous to this in our previous incarnation whatever that was <laughs> and we come and got into this human framework as we call it now and began to learn to drive and we've gone a hell of a lot more than three million miles since then baby we have been there done that holy shit and it's like this status I posted this morning you know what we fear the most is, is what's in us all you know because everybody feels it it's what happens to one happens to all that's just the way it works you know so all of this history as we call it <clears throat> the bloodshed and warfare and painful things unforgiven that have gone on forever that lives within each and every one of us the sum total of that experience is in our physicality and our genetic codes as well as in our spiritual nature that that inhabits the life form it's in every one of us no one escapes that most people have it suppressed to a very deep level but they don't have to deal with it or look at it it goes away during those childhood traumas you learn to be numb and to create feelings you know that essentially are synthetic I mean you do feel them so they're not totally artificial but essentially they're they're synthetic you know they, they're created feelings until and if you get past the numbness that happens to you in these experiences in childhood and if you do that then you start to be conscious if you get past those childhood traumas you start to grow through them then you become conscious of this deep pain that's in us all and that is the sum total of the experience of the earth and her inhabitants whether they've been human or otherwise we're all a soul collective there's not a plant a flower a bird a tree an animal that isn't related to us of course I mean that's not something that really has to be repeated we feel that too 
Becoming conscious is just to remember that, to know that, to experience it. That's what this life is. Experience. It's gaining and growing when there's new rules around, you know? <laughs> it's learning to live by different rules. Coming out of the ocean, looking at a reptile coming out of the ocean alongside of you and amazed at the beauty of it but unable to see yourself, the form you've taken at the same time. And how wonderful it must have been when we began to experience this form in the presence of others when we divided ourselves into other beings. And from the mother's womb brought forth more children of the light over onto this side, this perspective, this unusual point of view that could see and experience all around itself, could, couldn't see back into itself, was going to have to take a long, long time to remember how to do this and bring it back. It was an experience we agreed to take. There's been some wild-ass trucking ever since, I tell you, babies. But we're becoming conscious now many of those amongst us to begin with and going on from there conscious of what it is to be in this perspective where you see outward and remember this perspective where you see inward as well you see from all sides you can see yourself you can be yourself because you can see yourself I mean there's no point in remembering them because you already have you're there you understand and even know the presence of this experience here, this singular dimension as we call it. You understand the purpose of that. You see it. You experience it through the love in your total heart. And God, that changes it. That changes everything. That's planetary ascension right there. And it's inside of you right now, same as it is me too, because what's in one is in everyone. That's the other side of it. That's the counterbalance in this world of duality, which now becomes together because we were never separate from anything. It's a perspective we stepped into, an experience. That's why we call it like a movie or a video game that we're creating as we go along. Holy Christ, it's beautiful, guys. Time to let go of the trauma and get on with the party. <laughs> experience ourselves. Many of you, myself included, are developing new feelings, deeper feelings. You're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the world when you step out in it. Well, step back for a bit, but realize that world's in you. It's with you no matter where you are. The outward appearance, you know, we, we're learning to be more balanced about that because we'll become less reactive as we remember how it is to see from inside and out. And back at yourself too. You're you're everywhere. You're in everything. And you can see yourself from that perspective as well as this one. And they're all combined. It's a unified thing. It's a complete. It's like a symphony where everything just flows together and makes the most incredible harmony the most beautiful music ever heard. Babies, I want some of you rockin' hearts come join us here and let's, let's create some beautiful music. It's time. <laughs> the rest of us, let's just grab the party as it comes to us. In other words, let this consciousness of heart, the center of yourself, yeah, let it overwhelm you. What? the hell paradise awaits you remembering how it is seeing how it is stepping back into the perspective of what we've on this side call oneness because that's the only way we can conceive of it at the moment because of our singularity <laughs> in our duality oh Christ the irony the beauty the poetic irony it's, it's so 
amazing to be alive and live in it and to have been able to experience as many lifetimes as, as we have. You know, we've been there, done that, gone through just about everything there is to go through. And what we haven't been there, done that, gone through is a, something we've experienced vicariously with others. I mean, we do live through other beings as well. I mean, we can't experience their experience because we're all one. Anything's accessible. Every experience is knowable. You can even be making love to yourself there, you know, in the person of somebody else and experience it from both sides and both sides together in the oneness, in the harmony. It's an incredible way of being. And imagine when that becomes where you also experience it outside, inside, all around you. You experience the joy in every, every little specter of your being, in every presence of life. You're in tune with that harmony. Goes beyond symphony, goes beyond rock and roll. It's just an amazing and beautiful place of being. And we can remember it now. We can allow ourselves to. Because we know we're more than worthy of the pain and we step through its illusion now. So we begin to see back inside of ourselves See the collective of oneness within us and know how that all works. Good God Almighty, are we dancing now or what, babies? <laughs> Just wait till chapter 7. It'd probably be a lot better than this because I may do it before a live audience, a small one, very small one, two or three people. <laughs> That's enough. Because it might, you know, stimulate you. to They ask questions. You get a little more out of me that way, you know. We get a little more out of each other. It's always nice to have others to bounce things off of. We always come up with incredible solutions when we start working together in harmony. In our own rudimentary human way. Nothing wrong with doing it in this form first. A lot of people think we got to dance in paradise, you know and bring that here. Well, the hell, that's true, but we do it through human experience. It's created here. It's grounded here in this outward appearance world first. Not that it isn't happening there, too. Of course it is. It all goes hand in hand. But a lot of people got to adjust into this idea of earthiness. You know, they're in the body. They've found some enjoyment in it, but they've also, the trauma has... Uh, kept them far away from themselves. Now it's time for them to come back into the earth reality and realize it isn't cruelty for cruelty's sake. The meanness isn't there any longer if you don't allow it to be. You can live in this world, be grounded in the mother, and still be in the presence of the Father and all that is the great love that you are. In other words, it can't be created disharmoniously for you. And Mother Earth welcomes you with open arms and guides you and protects you from the sinister aspects. And you no longer have to live them. You live joyously. And as you do, you transform others around you just by the simple energy of being. I know you know that already. But you ain't sticking on the ground. You got to stay here. Do it here. Create it out there. Bring it here. Employ it here. It is through this personal being that we've adopted ourselves into that it all comes forward. That's why we did it. And that's the experience called appreciation. When you step back through this personal being into the experience of everything, of all life living, you've grounded it in the Mother Earth. You've given it life, a feeling life. It's hard to explain, but we can sure tell the stories. And keep telling them. 
And it'll come back to you. And you'll remember. A lot of the stories are metaphors. Yeah. Designed to help you remember. What the presence of your love is all about. <laughs> Meantime, let's party. And try and get over it, okay? Love you guys. Rock and roll. And good morning. Happy whatever day of the year this is. Because it's the best day of your life. Till tomorrow. <laughs> Love you guys. Rock and roll.